Hi, my name is Sean Thorson. I make props and costumes for all sorts of different applications. And this year, to get ready for the Maker Faire, I'm building a giant bad guy robot from the original RoboCop movies called Ed 209. It's going to be everything I can do to get it done just in time for the event, and here we go. Welcome back. We're looking at 26 days left to finish this project. It's been about two weeks since the last update, so let's go ahead and look at the parts that are in progress right now. So the last time you were here, I would just about gotten the toes to the point where they're finished up and ready for molding. And now, if you take a look, we've got all six toes, nice lightweight, pulled in fiberglass. They still need a little bit of body shop work and then primer and paint, but otherwise, they're ready to go. I also have one of the thighs here, it's come together, still need to make the hydraulic rams that will run up and down in between the rockers and the top of the thigh, but otherwise it's a finished part. Moving on, I've made pulls of the shoulder flap. So this part, I just had a couple of pieces of wood the last time you were here. Now I've got the pair of them all pulled and ready to go. These will fit nicely into the main body here. Prototype for the main body, I'm going to go ahead and call it about 90% done. Still have a little bit of smoothing and filling that needs to be done before I can start uh, glossing it up and getting it polished and ready for molding. Fitting into the side here, went ahead and pulled out CNC machine and cranked out parts of the gimbal for the armpit here. So this is the outer portion. There's also an inner portion. And with a little bit more sanding and filling, these parts are going to be ready for vacuum forming. The next part that was nearing completion in the last update was the waist and pelvis section here. Needs a little bit more wet sanding and cleanup, but otherwise it should be ready to be molded here pretty soon. Recent pieces out of the molds, these are the little flaps that go just above the lower leg. These are actually the locking flaps that go on either side of the heel block when the robot activates. These will move. Then <clears throat> I've got a few small parts that were just about ready to mold here. So these are going to be the hinge pieces that will go on the end of our ankle flaps. This is one of the small details that goes in the gun pod and then these little guys here I've been calling them the oil filters but they're probably a smoke launcher arrangement that will end up fitting into these recesses over here. So if you've been following the flicker feed at all uh, by now you've seen pictures of the prototype that I put together for the elbow. It was all cut out on the CNC machine and it's a big heavy wooden piece that's really not going to be especially sturdy, um, especially since it's made out of MDF. If it gets any kind of moisture to it, it's going to fall apart and start to de deteriorate pretty rapidly. Uh, so I'm going to end up duplicating it again in resin like a lot of the things that I've put together so far. Now unlike the solid resin cast pieces that we've done before, like this, this was made with a block mold. It's a solid piece. It's got a little bit of weight to it. Um, there's really no reason to do that with the elbow parts because they're rather large. Uh, it's going to end up weighing quite a lot and cost quite a lot of money worth of resin. So in the end, what I'm going to want to make is a lightweight hollow copy of the prototype made out of resin. The process that I'm going to be using is the same process that I typically use to make helmets. Right? This piece is rotocast. In order to make a nice lightweight hollow piece, basically what I do is I make a mold and then I put just enough resin inside to coat the surface, roll it around until I've got a good coating all the way over, and then once it cures, you end up with a hollow shell that's fairly sturdy and lightweight. So that's an overview of the process. In this case, I've got two parts of the elbow. One of them is ready to start a mother mold. So this mold was made in a different manner than the block molds that we made earlier on. This one, called a glove mold or a jacket mold, basically I've taken the rubber here, get a print coat to pick up all the details on the surface, and then after that cures, I add a fixotropic agent, which basically is uh, it's going to increase the viscosity and it'll make the rubber itself actually uh, thicker so it'll cling to vertical surfaces without just flowing all over the table, making a huge mess and wasting a lot of material. After that cures, once I've got it built up thick enough, the next step is to actually build a fiberglass mother mold. Now, the clay that you see on here is going to become the parting walls for the fiberglass mother mold. And the mother mold itself is basically made in the exact same way as the fiberglass molds that I used to make parts earlier on in the series. Now, the other half of the elbow joint, I've already made the rubber jacket mold and I've already made the fiberglass mother mold. So this one is a two-part mother mold. 
just to get the two halves lined up. And the purpose of the mother mold is to keep the silicone rubber from collapsing or twisting under its own weight. The rubber itself is still flexible, so without something to hold it straight, it's gonna end up caving in on itself and we'll end up with a part that's warped or twisted in some way. So I've got two halves of the mother mold. Once the fiberglass is cured, I trim the edges and go ahead and separate the shell, the mother mold, from the rubber jacket mold. Now, depending on the shape of your original part, you can get away sometimes with just taking your rubber jacket mold and actually peeling it off, just like a glove. Um, unfortunately, because of the fact that this has some fairly narrow parts to it, I'm not gonna be able to get away with that, so I'm gonna end up having to split the mold. In this case, I'm gonna start on what will become the inside of the elbow. I'm just gonna take my knife here, and I'm gonna start making this very clearly zigzag pattern as I cut along the rubber. The reason I'm not just going in a straight line is because I want to make sure that the cut will be easy to put back together when it comes time to actually make the rotocast copies. So the next step it's going to be to start prying this thing apart and continuing with my zigzag pattern. So once we've got the prototype piece out of the mold, you'll notice the mold itself isn't really going to hold up under much strain. If we pour a bunch of plastic into this, as soon as you start rolling it around, it's going to warp and twist and collapse under its own weight. So this is the reason why we've built the fiberglass mother mold. So I'm just going to go ahead and take the rubber jacket mold, nest it inside of the fiberglass mother mold. Give it a quick look on the outside to make sure that the seams are lined up. And then put the other half on. and bolt it together. So once the part comes out of the mold, it's just a question of nesting the rubber jacket mold into the fiberglass mother mold so that everything lines up properly. And once you've got it all bolted together, the next step is gonna be making sure that the seams are all lined up on the inside so that you don't end up with a bunch of excess uh, plastic leaking into that seam and creating mold flashing that'll have to be cleaned off later. So. Next step, I'm going to go ahead and mix up a quick batch of casting resin. Stuff that I'm using now has a black pigment added into it, so I don't have to worry quite so much about paint scratching and showing through some bright white color. So this particular stuff mixes one to one by volume. And now we just need to stir it thoroughly to make sure that everything is blended evenly. you notice I'm scraping the sides of the container while I'm doing this, just in case there's any residue of part A or part B that hasn't been blended in yet. And the next step's just gonna be pouring it into the mold. And once it's been poured in, we're just gonna roll it around so that it coats the inside of the mold. I want to make sure it gets coated evenly. Trick with a piece like this with all the gear teeth on that sort of sprocket arrangement is making sure that all the teeth get covered. A lot of times when you see guys that are doing this that don't have a lot of experience, which you can do, instead of using the black resin like I'm using, you can take your regular white resin and add pigment to it and since you're gonna to wanna to do more than one layer, you use a different color for each layer. That way, you can kinda of keep track if there's a spot that you've missed in one of the second or subsequent layers. So the challenge now 
is to just keep everything rolling around so that we don't have a big puddle. It's probably a little tough to spot on camera, but you can see if we just let it pool, it all kind of droops into one area, and that's gonna be a thick, heavy spot while everything else is paper thin. We really don't want that. So we're just gonna keep rolling this around so that everything's spread out evenly by the time it cures. Makes for a good workout. You do five sets of five reps. Next thing you know, you've got a whole bunch of robot parts and much bigger arms. Now in this case, I'm just trying to make a lightweight part, but if you were making, say, a costume piece of armor or a helmet, that sort of thing, you wanna be careful not to have little strings of resin that are gonna try and drip and make all of your stalactites and stalagmites and tiny little head stabbers inside that are gonna make it really uncomfortable. So you end up having to go back in and grind pieces off before you have your part finished. All right, looks like nothing's really moving anymore. So that's the end of the first coat. For the next batch here, I'm gonna end up mixing pretty much the same ratio. I'm gonna stop a little bit shy. So it'll be a slightly smaller batch of resin but in order to make it a little bit more viscous, I'm gonna end up adding what's called micro balloons or microspheres. It's basically a filler. It's gonna reduce the weight of the finished piece. And basically these are tiny little glass bubbles, hollow on the inside. So now when I mix my resin, just gonna go ahead and blend these in. Then we'll just pour it in. In this case, you'll notice the resin ends up being a little bit lighter color because of the white powder that's mixed into it. All right, coat number two. Coat number three, I'm just gonna go ahead and start laying up right now. Yeah, dust mask is a good idea when you're working with micro balloons because otherwise tiny little bits of broken glass work their way into the air while you're breathing, work their way into your lungs, start causing damage, leave scars, all that. Chicks dig scars, but it's hard to show them the ones on your lung tissue. So it's a good idea to be wearing a mask if only for that reason. And that's pretty much it. So we're gonna let that set up for a minute. So once the third coat's dry, rather cured um, and solid, we can go ahead and pull the mother mold apart. a piece of giant robot elbow. Just a little bit of sanding and cleanup to get rid of some of the rough patches where the mold decided to tear. And it'll be good to go. So once again, here's the original that we started with. And then here's the Rotocast copy. A little bit of sanding and cleanup, primer and paint, and it's gonna be a pretty convincing piece of robot. So that's a short version of rotocasting. Make sure you read the accompanying article for even more details and pictures of the other half all finished. I've got 26 days left to finish the whole project. We're still making good progress. Make sure you tune in next time.